being a mayor or, or city councilman is, is really important, in, especially in a small community like this. You really have the ability to sh shape policy. We may argue and we may disagree, but through it all, we want our kids to have school, we want people to be safe, we want traffic to be controlled, we want an economic base in our community. Through it all, we share the same values. Well, unfortunately, it's because sometimes not a lot of people want to do it. It's kind of a little bit disheartening to when you have elections come up and nobody runs on the city council. One of my biggest fears is that people who have the ability to serve and can really do a good job are shying away from local elected positions. I think you can have a greater effect in this position than any position, because you do, it's, a, it's everyday life. Being able to affect positive change in your community, to be able to really see good things happen. The mayor offers a role of leadership that provides an ability to convene opportunity. Success occurs when that preparation meets opportunity. We've got 5,000 souls that live in the city of Moab, and each one is important. My door is always open. People need to realize that the government works for them. You know, everything that I've tried to do here, it's not about you or it's not about that guy or my neighbor over here. It's what's the best for the city. You get a little bit higher level of respect when you talk to people. Uh, my kids think it's really great that they're able to say that my dad's the mayor of the town of Alta. I'm very proud of the building we're in. It's an old school that we moved in not long after I was elected. And we've developed a park around it. And I think the development of Holiday and what has happened, it's kind of progressed from sleepiness to kind of a fun area to be. We've been developing a trail system and a trail network that is hugely popular with our residents. The city was able to acquire the Suncrest development out of bankruptcy. We'll be putting uh, a, a large portion of that, probably about 3,000 acres, under a perpetual conservation easement that will be preserving that land for future generations. Managing the growth in, a, in hopefully one of the most equitable ways possible. We've had a lot of changes over the time that uh, in the last eight years or even 20 years when I look back. We've grown in a community from about, uh, oh, I don't know, 6,700 or something like that to a little over 11,000. It took me more than 11 years to get State Street fixed between uh, Murray and Sandy. It had no curb gutter and sidewalk. It's Highway 89, and that was, is one of my greatest achievements. The economy, we went uh, from, a, from a mining, mineral-based extraction industry uh, economy to tourism con economy. The biggest accomplishment, though, is we're the first green power community in the United States, uh, recognized by the EPA. And, uh, you know, we've uh, invested heavily in, in solar, there's so many other issues that, that other communities have that we just don't seem to have, and, and I attribute that to, to our forefathers and previous mayors and previous councils, and, and us, as, as, as having a good plan in place and, and not dealing so much with the, the big stuff, but the little stuff. We've been able to improve our city park area. That's been a work in progress for many years. I have worked to keep Alta the special place that it is so that my, my children, their children, and all future generations can s experience and see Alta th the way it is now and hopefully the way it will be in the future. We've put in new water lines, and roads, and infrastructure. But one of the major accomplishments that I look back on is the Miner's Memorial that sits out on the corner of the City Hall block. But together the community raised $750,000 in donations to make the five monuments part of the permanent memory of mineral extraction program in our community. City lighting, the Christmas program that we do, um, the cleaning project that the youth do every year. For me, I've had the unique experience of starting a city. Not many mayors get that opportunity. That has been a very rewarding experience. And frankly, as the first mayor, as the only mayor of Cottonwood Heights, I can humbly say I'm the best mayor the city's ever had, and not many mayors can say that in truth. <laughs> the pressure from development up here in the town of Alta. Development of, of available property, undeveloped property on the east side of the city. You know, Millville right now is going through a lot of growth. We've got you know, potentially 100 homes that are going to be built here in the next couple of years and subdivisions. And I know that all the other communities are dealing with it, too. The infrastructure that goes in, the roads, the sidewalk, the water, you know, that stuff that is going to be 
here that we're going to be dealing with for the next 50 to 100 years. Once that developer sells his homes and builds his roads and things and turns them over to the city, they're ours. The subdivisions that we allow to come in here, we don't let them cut corners. We, we make them do it right, and then it's just that much of a less of a problem that we have to deal with down the road. Some of the most difficult things, I think, are personnel issues that you end up facing over time. Trying to help people succeed in their positions and uh, then maybe increasing the accountability of those positions. We lost our long-term uh, city manager of over 20 years and we hired uh, another city manager and that didn't work out very well. So we've got an interim right now that's doing a great job, so things are back on track. We experimented with privatizing our snow removal in Cottonwood Heights. That turned out to be a disaster and it created a lot of turmoil in our city. The crash in 2008 and everything just went downhill and we just got by and got by and got by. Loss of our industry, the coal mining industry had in 2007 had 2,000 miners earning $70,000 annual incomes per year. Today we have about 200 coal miners dealing adequately and trying to help support the community's needs from an empty bucket might be the greatest challenge that this office has had. The fact that we started out with two Superfund sites, one was a smelter and one was a mill where they crushed rock and ore, that was devastating. We have since been working with EPA to alleviate the problems of Superfund contamination. And so we have had a huge growth spurt in property that when it was first designed as a Superfund site, was given by the county a value of $2,500. It's now worth more than $400 million. You know, I don't know that there's anything that I could share. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. Somebody calls and they ask to talk to the mayor, ask if he's in. The assumption is that the mayor is male. And I'm here to tell all the ladies out there that we need more women in politics. I have a police chief who loves to tweet what's going on in the city from a police perspective. One day he chose to tweet that they had just issued a citation to a citizen who they found had 65 boa constrictors in his basement. Well, he just tweeted that out thinking that was a kind of a special interest story. Well, it made not only national news, but international news did you have a discussion with your chief about tweeting? Yes, we did. We did, and his tweeting was subdued significantly after that. <laughs> At our town council meetings, we always have a, a departmental report. Our marshal has always tried to throw a, a funny little antidote in there. You know, he talked about how there was a call into our police dispatch center of a man chasing a moose up in the Albion Basin, quickly escalated into a new call that says, now we have a moose chasing a man. <laughs> it turned around quite quickly, so. <laughs> Helicopters and everything, it was this massive thing, and I showed up from work and I was in my, I was in some old polo shirt, and they said, the mayor's in a helicopter, but we need to do a news conference. Can you do it? I'm like, all right. And they put me in front of all these cameras and put a mic on and go. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of anything that's really come up other than the time we had to fish that dead raccoon out of the res water reservoir up here a couple of years ago. I'm kidding. We didn't have to do that. That's... We had a motorcycle shop in Midvale, and he said, I would love to be your transportation in the parade. So I rode the motorcycle. Now, he had a pet parrot. As far as the parrot was concerned, he belonged to her. So I am riding in the parade with a very jealous parrot telling me off. It was crazy, I think. We were settled in 1907. And so in 2007, we had our centennial celebration. Many activities were planned, and one of the committee people came up with the idea, let's have a bunny hop. And we had many thousands. In fact, I have a picture behind me of that bunny hop. And we set the Guinea's world record of 3,840 people. They lined up for five blocks, solid. And I thought that was one of the most memorable events of my time as mayorship, is seeing all those people doing a bunny hop. The high school choir a few years ago sat me in the middle of the stage and sang in front of a large audience, perhaps a 1,000 people, welcome Mr. Grinch. People ask all the time, well, why did you run to be mayor? 
I was a scoutmaster at the time, and I, was, I didn't see any end in sight to being a scoutmaster, and I had a choice, either do another winter of snow caving or run for office. It was not a hard choice. <laughs> I will miss most having contact with all of those agencies, all of those people that I've worked with on a state level, on a national level, on a county level. Those partnerships are invaluable. I think there's a camaraderie that you develop. I will miss some of that. I'll miss the interaction with my citizens, and I have learned what great people we have here, and I will miss that opportunity to associate with them and the city officers and other elected officials. That's a special camaraderie. The weekly or daily involvement, uh, the people that we associate with, the people that, that put in the time and the effort to either be on the city council or the planning commission, uh, the staff that we've got, you know, the staff we've had. As the mayor, when you attend events and so forth, people give you a lot of feedback in terms of, you know, things that are happening in the community and, and really help you to understand all parts of the community. Uh, I, I will miss having that interaction um, because that's really where you become very intimate with what's going on. The daily opportunity of working with the staff members of Price City to make good government better will be what I miss the most. The interaction with the people that I serve and uh, the staff that, that I work with, uh, it's a great staff, it's a great city, great people live here, and uh, that's, that's the one thing I'm really gonna miss. The association I have with all of our city employees, the association I have with other elected officials, particularly here in Millard County and our sixth county region. Working with department heads, working with the public, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Trying to problem solve. People calling me and having a problem in the area or in the city. When I came into this job, I thought there were two sides to everything. And then I found out there were at least 17 and maybe 30. Being able to have a little bit of the inside information that, that, you know, that maybe the general public doesn't have. And, and that ability when, when you say that it's the mayor calling, usually everybody answers your phone call. <laughs> it's not like, I'll, you know, oh, he's not in or I'll get back to you people that are hateful, because I don't think that builds community. City council meetings. <laughs> yeah, those long drawn out city council meetings. And uh, you know, not gonna miss that too much. My kids, they didn't want to go anywhere with me because a trip to the store that should take 10 minutes resulted in an hour. And so, you know, maybe my family will be uh, willing to be seen with me more often. The least thing that I'll miss maybe is budget time. It's really hard to decide who gets what. The, the mayor's job is a part-time job, even though it's 40 hours a week. I might get to ski a little bit more. <laughs> you know, some of the abuse that you have to take, frankly. The complaints. You know, the neighbors that can't get along with each other. <laughs> I had a guy that, he called me, this is probably 10, 11 o'clock at night, and he says, this guy, he says, he's got, he's parked in his driveway, and he's shining his lights right in his bedroom window, and they're on high beam. I said, well, what do you want me to do about it? We'll come make him stop. Being yelled at severely uh, over small, insignificant issues like weeds that are growing in the yard or when the power goes out, it's always the mayor's fault. I won't necessarily miss that. The complaints about neighbors that don't take care of their yards. The dog barking and, uh, you know, what, what can you do about that? And how can my water taste funny? The mayor is responsible in the community's mind's eye for everything. I've heard it all. I've heard <laughs> pretty much everything. Having to juggle my other activities around the schedule of the city meetings and city responsibilities and duties. Did your wife have some plans for you? Oh, she's had plans for 16 years <laughs> that I haven't gotten to, so <laughs> yes, there are plans there. It's really important for elected officials to learn to be good listeners. Be patient and listen. If you're talking, you're not listening, and people deserve to be heard. Don't be so quick to talk, because you don't know it all, that's for sure. And realize that things take time. Don't be in a rush. You're not gonna change the world. It's a very slow, slow process. Government moves slower than industry. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna change this, and we're gonna do that. It doesn't work that way. Politics does not work right, that way. When you first come in, you think it's gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to make things different, but, but change takes time. Yeah, running a city, uh, it's political. Amazing. <laughs> Let the citizens of your city know that what's going on. You have to have meetings that are open 
and that people can attend and you can get both sides of the issue? Get all the information that you can, listen to all sides, seek first to understand before being understood. Make sure that you uh, can handle some of the critiques and so forth that'll come your way. You can't serve in public office if you don't have a thick skin. You have to recognize that nobody knows everything that you know. And so you, you have a job to educate and sometimes you have to be patient with the people to do that education. Educate your citizens on why a certain decision is the right thing to do. That communication with the residents is so important, and, but it's also, I think, one of the most challenging things for us to do. It's frustrating sometimes because people don't want to learn, they just want you to fix the problem. Not everybody's opinions are going to agree, and uh, as soon as you recognize that and help everyone to kind of come to a, a common ground, that's really one of the biggest roles of the mayor. If you are the mayor, you represent all the people in your community for a variety of things. You don't just come to an office for three hours in the day to answer the phone. You've got to work outside of that. You need to become fully involved. It's something that you can't do just part-time. And you have to, it's something you can't just think about on the city council night. Understand that this job will take as much time as you are willing to give it. And so you need to be judicious in the time you allot. And that's a problem when you're a part-time mayor. And I remember Mayor Dolan, when I was first uh, elected, had a discussion with me and he asked me if I had figured out the great lie. And I said, what's the great lie? He said, there's no such thing as a part-time mayor. People need to learn how to be team players. Move on from issue to issue and work together collectively a group is one of those things that uh, I think is really important for council members to be able to do. When you've proposed something and it was not successful to gain consensus, Leave the fight alone and go start a new project. Don't belabor it and beat it to death. The citizens of the community are looking for you to do the right thing, even though sometimes it's hard to know the, what is the right thing. The more you can involve department heads and employees, the better you're going to be. Because there's people out there that are a heck of a lot smarter than you are. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm their representative. And I have to make sure that they know and I know that we are working together to make this a better place to live. It's been many a time that, uh, you know, I've had to vote on something that I probably didn't agree with, but it was the best thing for the community. It's really easy to get involved and start to say, this is what I'm going to do for North Logan. But more importantly, this is what I ought to do for Cache Valley or for the state of Utah. Listen to the minority, but still have the political courage to do what's right for the whole community. One of the biggest problems many elected officials have is an unwillingness to step forward and make that decision. They do paralysis by analysis and, and it goes on forever. There's nothing worse than not making a decision. If you don't make a decision, then nothing happens. And if we make a wrong decision, we can always correct it. When you make decisions and work with people, think about what the long-term ramifications are gonna be. Realize the things you do today are gonna have different consequences down the road. Wisdom is greater than knowledge and always want to, to do the thing that's the wisest. Get to know the people and work with the people. Don't get discouraged, don't get flustered. Be very, very respectful. I, I wanted to read a text I got from a, from a, a, a resident here. He's just an all-around good guy, but we've, we've had our ups or downs. But says, I do appreciate you taking the time and the effort, and thank you for your years of service to the people and the city of Millville. I know that we have had our differences over the years, but one thing that I've respected in you above all else is that at least you tried. Others have complained, yelled, and talked, but you stepped up to the plate. You put in the time, the effort, the sweat, and at times, I'm sure, probably tears of frustration. Edmund Burke, an Irish philosopher, once stated, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. No one can honestly ever accuse you of that. Thanks again, Bob. And you know, that's, it's not about the little bit of money you get, and it's not about the, you know, the, the, the thanks and the things that you get, but when you get something like that from a guy that you don't always see eye to eye with, but that's what it's all about, and we all get that. We don't get enough of it, but people say, why do you do that? That's why we do it. You've got to be the cheerleader, the leader, and the one that loves every citizen. Whether they agree with you or not, you have to have mutual respect.